Hey everyone, I hope you had a great week. Uh, for this episode, I want to focus a bit about painting environments and values. There was a lot of great questions on the previous video. How do you choose values? How do you paint the backgrounds? Uh, and there was a particular one by Danny where he was wondering about the creative process in doing a background and picking your values. And also, how do you add a character to a scene? It can get a bit hard to balance a character and environment at once. Uh, and I want to share some things I find helpful that hopefully can help all of you in painting more backgrounds and adding more characters to your scene. So let's just start painting, shall we? I did the simple line drawing. What I, what I like to do is really try and just block in this very simple value. So you're trying to get a general gaze of how I want to paint the image. Because we're painting a pretty, a, a large, pretty large scene, uh, I do want to separate the sky from the ground and really make that contrast between this because I also want the whales to pop out so it's important that the value where the whales are really pops out and has a brighter feel to it uh, and also gives me some selections to work with but essentially this is the choices you make on your own and choosing things that help you easily read the image even if we turn it off we still get a read for it image I want to break it down to three simple value grouping essentially what's dark is really close to us and what's kind of mid gray it's kind of in between the mid ground and what's light gray is really far off in the image and this is usually how you can think about when you paint environments is whatever is close to us tends to be a bit darker uh, and these are not rules you have to stick to it's just something that naturally occurs when you look at large landscape scenes you often get a lot of depth and atmosphere further into an image uh, and it's a good way to think about when you do your environments you can of course always bend it and push it and help emphasize your focal point which I ended up doing later where I put a bit of the brighter values against the darker. But it's always good to think of it like what's dark is usually closer to us and as we get further along in the image it tends to get brighter, especially if it's like a big environment or a big scene that you're trying to paint. So as always, I always try to establish big reads early on. I try to get a general feel for the colors, the lighting, just not worrying too much about details, just getting some broad strokes in to just get a feel for the whole image. And I was actually pretty excited painting the clouds. I love painting clouds. For me, painting clouds reminds me a lot of like Studio Ghibli clouds and soft ice cream, which is something we have a lot in Sweden. Uh, and I, I always think about that stuff when I paint, ice, uh, when I paint clouds. <laughs> And something I encourage you whenever you're painting certain things, like if you want to try to capture a feeling, try to think of something that helps communicate that. For me, clouds are just soft and puffy, and I think a lot about ice cream when I think about that, so that's how I like to paint it. Uh, and I, I encourage you to try and find things to help reference whenever you're painting your own things. I'm also staying fairly zoomed out, but I need to zoom in uh, uh, pretty soon because like it's a bit hard to read certain things. I'm kind of squinting to try and make it out. So I ended up zooming in a bit and just working in a bit on the details. Again, this is all of these shapes are really far in the image, so we're not going to get that clear of a shape as the character that's close to us. But I still want to get a bit of better readability on the shapes and just adding a bit more details to kind of indicate that there's a lot of noise and density far off. But because it's really far off, we're going to have to simplify it. If you look at the image on the reference, like things that are far off, you really don't see much detail at all. It's just general shapes. Uh, compared to things that are close to us, we're going to add way more detail and definition to. And that also helps when you try to establish depth inside of a painting, is to try to differentiate between those things. Whatever is close to you, I would put a lot of effort into bringing it up in detail and render quality compared to things that are far off where you're going to have to suggest more things. Because that also tells the, the viewer that there's a lot of space in the image between these two and it helps sell the space much better as well. So I'm focusing a lot of my effort on the bottom part of the image. I, as you saw, I had to cool in some of the greens that was pretty far back. Because they're pretty far back, they're not going to be as warm as the ones closer to us. And it's because of the atmosphere, it tends to desaturate and line things up a bit. Uh, but I also keep in mind the original values I had in mind, and I like to refer back to it as I keep going along. There is one adjustment I made with the character where I brighten her a bit, mostly to pop her out and make her stand out against the background, which I kind of forgot when I did the original thumbnail. But 
easy fix uh, but other than that I'm keeping pretty true to my original statement and I think it's important to take the time early on and make some decisions of how you want things to read where do you want the contrast where do you want the main focal point to be I think it just helps uh, getting the image to work a bit better uh, I went back and forth a lot on the character to try and make it work and I ended up changing her so it's like she has her hand on her head She's looking up, she's just hiking along the road and then like, whoa, these whales are flying by and she just, just stopped and took a look to take in the scene. Uh, but I had a lot of fun with this painting. Uh, I always liked the idea of whale migration, uh, like kind of like birds, but with whales, I always thought it'd be so cool if you got to see that, would never happen. But it's a very fun subject matter and I really enjoyed doing this painting. Thank you so much for watching and thank you so much for the questions on the previous video. It was super fun. Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and there was something useful in there for you to help you in your own journey. Uh, if you have other questions or thoughts, let me know in the comment section below. I'm always looking for inspiration for new videos. Uh, and if you subscribe, you'll always be notified when a new episode comes out. And I will see you next Friday. I hope you have a fantastic weekend. Have a good one. Bye.